Hello Sim Gamers and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Derail Valley Simulator. We're taking a look at a particular problem here that I'd kind of like to try, try and solve. And that is this delivery to the steel mill, which is about halfway through the map. Um, we don't have the capability of really doing this one, even though it's quite lucrative. Almost $18,000 plus whatever our bonus is going to be. But it's 696 tons, which is way more than our little locomotive RD our DM3 is capable of doing. Also, it's a long two uh, delivery, which means I need to have train length uh, two before I can even really consider this um, this delivery. But there are solutions to these problems over here at the career manager. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is getting our uh, train length two license done that requires a wallet go ahead and pay that okay we've got we've got train length two now now the other license i want to look at is actually a slightly different way of the career tree which is kind of at a decision point right now there are, there are two different ways to go we can grab, we now have the capability of getting multiple unit. Long two is a, uh, train length two is a prerequisite for this. The other thing that train length two is a prerequisite for is the DH4. The problem is there's no DH4 at this, at this particular yard, I checked. <laughs> so in order to move this particular cargo load, we need a more capable train. So we're gonna assemble, essentially, um, we're gonna assemble a long set of locomotives with the with the multiple unit which serves a couple purposes first of all it uh gives us more flexibility in, in the types of trains we can manufacture or like uh, locomotive stacks we can put together uh let me go in here and just put these licenses away in my inventory and it gives us more capability look at that sunrise um for us to do more work so i'm going to pop over there's the dm3 we own or we have a license to i'm going to pop over to where all the trains are staged and we'll start putting together a pretty decent sized locomotive before we accept this order all right right over here you can see we have three uh of our diesel electric two axles that we can stitch together into basically one uh, one long train or one long engine so the first step is to get uh, oops each of these guys started up and on the track back to sort of starting up the very first engine that we ever became familiar with And this is a sort of a part of the quote-unquote tech tree that um, is kind of an interesting one. It'll obviously be a prerequisite to us being able to assemble other trains that are quite large. No, oh, I'm not in gear. So we're going to pull onto the rotator here. We'll uh, rotate this train onto the main, this uh, loco onto the main track. Go ahead and turn the thing. Make sure we're actually joined up right here. Which we are. Very good. And drive this off. So we're going to pull it forward with a little bit of room to work with. We have enough room on the turntable to assemble uh, two different locomotives together. And um, 
In order to conserve fuel, I guess I will shut her down. Okay, the next, lo next locomotive is on this track, so it's two positions that we gotta move it. Move the um, turntable here. Try to get a decent view where I can control it with the mouse. It's like that one. Nope, one more. Okay, that's good. Now we start this one up. Release the brake, release the parking brake. And I'm gonna go ahead and just assemble these two on the turntable and then pull them off. Assuming I don't go too far forward. Oops. That was awfully close. Oh my god, that was close. Okay. Let's go ahead and just... Back up a little bit. For my own sanity. And it could actually sit here on the turntable. Um, all turned off and everything, so... Neutral. Fuel cut off. That. And now we got one more loco to move. And I'm just really going to make sure that this, uh, this engine gets on the turntable and call it good. All right, fuel cut off. Park and brake is set. Now, we need to turn it uh, to get it back on the main track. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna build a train sandwich or a locomotive sandwich. I am going to very carefully make sure all the brakes are disengaged on this one and just, you know, <clears throat> leave it as is in neutral and I'll use the rear locomotive to sort of push it into place. Brakes are out. Release the parking brake. And we're just going to very gently start bumping this thing forward. With not much force at all. And we'll keep this all going until all the locomotives basically meet. Since that one up there has got its parking brake set. Hopefully it's not too fast. Okay. Go ahead and set the parking brake on this one. We're going to leave the throttle on. All right, no damage. Sweet. So now that we have the multiple unit license, we can actually use this blue connection that we haven't been able to use in the past. We're going to go ahead and get these things all stitched up. Put on that connection, put that connection. Open up those brake valves. And then we do the same thing here. Having um, the multiple engine license, so far as I can tell, uh, I don't know what the limit is on the number of engines that can be attached. But I guess as long as they have the uh, data couple, um, the controller couple, they can all do the thing. So here's what we basically put together. Let's go to our inventory and take a look. So the Diesel Mechanical 3 has 500 dry, 400 wet uh, maximum cargo, and we are wanting to move 
this order of 600, uh, 696, which is definitely more than the diesel mechanical can handle. However, if we take a look at the diesel electric two, it's got 300 dry, 250 wet. Multiply that by three. <clears throat> uh, now we have 750 tons wet or 900 tons dry. Uh, and this thing weighs 40 tons. So 120 tons of that is consumed in the locomotive. However, I think that's going to be okay. So some of these controls are bound together and some of them aren't. <clears throat> no, Lefty Lucy. All we're going to do is we're going to fire up all of our diesel engines here. So we've got the data, data cable on. And what should now be happening is all these switch positions and stuff that we're setting should actually be mirrored in from the control panel should be mirrored in the other car in the other cars. Yes. So we see the, the forward and rear lights are on, right? The gear has been engaged. The um, brake has been engaged. And that is true of all of our locomotives. All right. With all the train assembled, we should be able to ready to take that should be ready to take this order. And here we go. So, uh, we need to go to B20, um, and we are currently up here in the loading area, so we need to go through all these junctions, basically out the entire station, and then back it up. All right, we've got our order confirmed. We've got our locomotives up and running. It's, uh... We're not in gear. <clears throat> it's been a little while since I've operated this thing. Let's go ahead and get pulling forward while I take a look at our station map. We're over here in the turntable area, so we need to basically go through uh, three intersections out the south end of the of the map to get to uh, B Bravo Two outbound. So we're going to pull ourselves all the way out of the station and then uh, start shunting uh, as we're going backwards. We'll be making a two rights into the Bravo yard. But we've got a pretty capable stack of locomotives here with a diesel electric two, easy to control. It's one option we, one has on the on the career path. And uh, notably, this locomotive will actually have a fairly decent top speed by comparison to the diesel mechanical three that we've been running. Now, what's interesting is that uh, currently this individual brake is acting as a full train brake because the um, we're, we're, we've bound all the controls. So we need to go right and then right again. Uh, I'm going to drive from the back here for better visibility. Flip it all into reverse. And get us moving. So I think it's that junction over there that we need to flip to go to Bravo Yard. This is just kind of cool having this uh, three engine locomotive setups going on. Our maintenance for these things is going to be pretty, um, pretty painful when it comes to that time. At least it's the least expensive locomotives, right? You know, or the most affordable locomotives. Right, so this one is the next junction. I'm gonna go ahead and flip that over. Yes, we're, <clears throat> we were over here, so it means we came out to the south end of the yard, so right, right into the Bravo. And we're looking for Bravo 2 outbound. Let's go ahead and just get our to a stop here and make sure we're looking at the right thing. Um, if we're coming from the south, it is a left and then a right. Kalamish Malik left a comment. This is so similar to Sailwind, but trains are 100 times more complex. 
That's why I like featuring early access titles like this, with enough complexity to be a good simulation, but also approachable enough to be a good game. Thanks for the comment, Kelmesh. Yep. Okay. Got it. It's... That one right there. So these cars over here. Perfect. Okay, getting into the... The back locomotive will help. We're going to pick up a whole bunch of steel scrap. Bound for the steel mill. And this ought to be a fairly easy trip. It's only halfway over the map. We've got actually a, per a fairly easy locomotive to run, at, uh, all things considered. One, two, three is what I like to put on there to help slow down. Just taking it easy, backing into this thing here. We've got a whole bunch of locomotive. Which brings us a lot of mass, and I don't want to slam into this with too much mass and cause any damage, if I can avoid it. Okay. Let's go ahead and push. Bingo, we're there. And we'll double check our manifest really quick. We've got uh, Charlie Bravo Kila 317 at the front here, yes. Brake is released. I'm just going to pop to the end. <clears throat> Charlie Bravo Kilo 053. And uh, that should be the only emergency brake ready to go. Let's check our lights. Dashboard is indicating all clear. <clears throat> now, we've got ourselves a run to go. Let's go forward. How about that? <laughs> so we can just start really stomping on the gas at this point. Heading south out of um, machine factory in town. Come around here, we've got this turn. All these turns and stuff were already set. The only turn we need to change is this intersection right here, because we came around this way last time, or likely need to change, uh, to get into Steel Mill. 30 kilometers an hour around this turn, leaving the station, then we're ready to basically absolutely stomp on it, going downhill, 120 kilometers an hour. And here she is. A <laughs> triple engine uh, DE2 pulling 700 and something tons of steel. Now it says 70, so we'll just let her go. And this one thing I like about the operation of this kind of train, this kind of locomotive, is that it's just pretty easy to do. Let's go ahead and put in a little bit of braking here so it'll get running away too fast. They want us at 60 and holding through this section. And I can tell by the speedometer that we're gaining a little bit of speed, so I want to put down some a little bit of brake. That's one of the weaknesses of this particular setup, <clears throat> going this direction in the tech tree, is that this locomotive does not have any um, any engine braking, so it's all mechanical braking. In a little bit here, we're going to have a fairly sharp left-handed turn. This thing always gets me down here on uh, CSW. So that was 80, uh, speed limit 80 and begin decelerating. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of let myself slow down a little bit down to 75.
Junction coming up, 60 and 0 0.3. And I'm willing to bet that shortly after that junction is a hard left turn, which is basically 30 kilometers an hour in the, through the yard, right? And sure enough, it is. 30 kilometers an hour through the yard. Just putting the brake on as much as we can to prevent us from uh, derailing right here. But we're through this turn easy enough. Already halfway to our destination. Most of the work was in assembling this train. Uh, assembling, assembling the locomotive. Junction coming up 60 kilometers an hour, and we're starting to get into some dense areas. So we've got OWC, then uh, then FM before we even get over a steel mill. So that means keeping an eye on some junctions, making sure we're coming through, um, you know, sort of the open open line. What do we got coming up here? OWC. So we just go straight through B-Line, hopefully. Yep, looks like we got ourselves a straight shot through here. So we're probably clear to go ahead and hop on the throttle and rip it through this yard. Next is FM. And once again, we should be set up to go through the B-Line, the Bravo Yard. All right, 90 kilometers an hour is our speed limit up here. And this is a, a fun and interesting way to go on the, on the career path. In the local, the multiple engines connected. Provides some unique challenges, namely getting all the engines squared away and put together. But uh, once that's done, really, um, it's pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and hit the brakes here, get ourselves down to the uh, appropriate speed for going through a yard. Yep, everything's set for pass-through. Which means we can really hammer on the old... ...engine power. Pretty cool stuff, hooking up three diesel, uh, diesel-electric engines... <laughs> ...together to... ...work this... ...particular train in tandem. Definitely pulling a bit of a hill here, but that's, you know, why we have the extra train capacity to uh, be able to accelerate this load up this hill without any issues. Okay, it was three right to the left. Right, right, right. And left, yes. That should put us in B3I incoming right over there. Looks like we're all clear. Let's go ahead and get ourselves uh, locked down and decoupled and paid. Hit that. go through and shut down each engine or each locomotive sorry 
And I really need to have the <clears throat> um, one emergency break set. Or one parking brake set. But I'll go ahead and set the front and back one anyway, just for a little added safety. We are fully decoupled, right? We're fully unhooked. Okay. Into the station we go. Station office we go to get paid, hopefully. Order validator. And there we go. Uh, grab my actual cash. Report. We got 17,768 plus 8,884 bonus for a total of 26,652. Um, so we made more money than we spent on the license fee to make this delivery possible. However, we do want to make sure that we have oof, all of our fees paid. Okay, so that was like 9,000 credits worth of fees to run those three locomotives. So that's one thing we want to keep in mind when we're taking a look at future um, future d deliveries with this particular setup. But those are decisions for another time. Until then, I'm SimGamer, and this has been Derail Valley Simulator. <laughs>